is it possible to have two persons sitting at the same desk even though they live 351 kilometers apart? The TrackMan station system drastically simplifies any virtual setup. Having more than one control panel connected to the system, those are all cool features. Welcome to a new episode of Panasonic Live Video Series. Can you imagine producing a live show with multiple camera angles by using only one camera? Letting auto tracking technology adjust the framing of several shots automatically to simplify the operator's work? Welcome to a new episode of Panasonic Live Video Series. My name is Jauma and Guillem is joining me today to discuss new technologies and workflows for video production. Hello Jauma, it's a pleasure to join you here even though it is actually no longer necessary to be physically present where the production takes place. So stay with us and discover how fast and easy it is now to set up a virtual system and how Panasonic's plug-and-play solution make virtual production a lot easier for you. And it is very useful as the need for virtual connections is definitely increasing. Offering any kind of virtual setup used to be a special feature for companies and institutions alike. Now, it has become a normal way to meet customers, partners, and colleagues, or to attend seminars, exhibitions, and trainings. Panasonic is producing a wide range of high-quality PTZ cameras that can be easily used to record or live stream such virtual events from remote locations. Recently, we held a webinar called Is it possible to have two persons sitting at the same desk, even though they live 351 kilometers apart? It is one of my favorite webinars as it reflects an issue that many are facing. We demonstrated how AR and VR productions have been greatly simplified and how they bring additional benefits for producing content in remote locations and social distancing studios. We wanted to make the life of those that are working on AR and VR applications a bit easier. We did this by implementing the 3D protocol as a standard feature in our UE150 and UE100 PTZ cameras. This was a first for the market, with 3D being an industry standard for graphics engines. The cameras provide position data notification, meaning pan, tilt, zoom and focus, which in combination with Genlock makes them compatible with all the main players in the 3D engine market. Implementing 3D in our PTZ cameras have greatly contributed to make AR and VR affordable for many customers, and it has opened new doors creatively. To widen the access to virtual worlds even further, we have started a collaboration with TrackMan, a company specializing in tracking solutions. The TrackMan station provides additional lens data, like focal length and distortion, on top of the basic 3D information. This additional data is needed to ensure the most accurate lens calibration and therefore the best picture quality. Users simply need to choose their camera model and their graphic vendor through a simple drop-down menu and the rest is taken care of automatically. As a result, it turns a virtual setup into a plug-and-play solution as our PTZs can then be integrated without the need for any extra calibration processes. This is great news, as production companies are always looking at new and innovative ways of producing dynamic content that will captivate their audience. 3D graphics can also be used in combination with robotic camera systems, like the one you can see behind me. This way, you get the most out of small spaces, creating more perspectives with dynamic imagery. Exactly. This is why our Smart Life production portfolio includes a great number of robotic camera systems that can be used, of course, in virtual environments. 
they enable access to high-end camera movements while remaining quite easy to install. For more details on our robotic camera systems, please make sure to watch our previous live series episodes. The compatibility with AR and VR boosts the potential of robotic systems and vice versa. It creates incredible possibilities for content creation, with virtually no boundaries as virtual layouts can easily be changed. To this one, or to that one, or our previous one. In addition to a virtual set, you can also use a talent tracking system that provides orientation and the position of the presenters on stage. You can use that data to interact with the virtual graphics or to automatize your production with the cameras following the presenters automatically. With talent tracking, we can place virtual objects anywhere in the set so that we can walk around them or scale them up to show specific details. One could also use the Panasonic SF100 auto tracking software to have a PTZ camera follow automatically a single presenter on stage without requiring an operator. It does this without using any sensor. It relies purely on image analysis of the human body and face recognition. You can also combine the auto tracking software with our innovative 8K ROI system, which uses a large 8K sensor as a canvas to produce up to 5 HD different signals at the same time. The camera and the crop frames are controlled by one single operator, or they are adjusted automatically using object recognition software and tracking technology. This makes the 8K ROI system a fully automatized and next-generation production tool that can be used for local and remote productions alike. Now, let's take a look at the global production system that we have been using today, which also offers new and innovative ways of producing contents. Indeed, we have recently introduced Keros, our new groundbreaking IT IP video processing platform whose open architecture is a game changer for all customers involved in high quality video production and delivery, be it live or in the studio. Being resolution and format independent and providing an unlimited number of video layers in real time, Keros also gives access to performances currently impossible to achieve with traditional hardware-based products. On top of operating in usual formats, its free canvas features also allows operators to work with non-traditional formats, such as 32 by 9 for an LED backdrop display or 9 by 16 for smartphone production. Kados can easily mix and match everything. NDI, SDI, HDMI, and SD2110 signals all at the same time. As a result, Kairos is the perfect solution for a smooth transition to the IP world. I hope you enjoyed this run through the possibilities offered by Panasonic's Smart Life production technologies. Please make sure to watch the other episodes of the series to get more detailed information. It was a pleasure speaking with you, Joma. Same here, Guillem, and thank you all for your attention. In case you have any questions or you require additional information, please use the comment section below this video. And stay tuned for the upcoming behind the scenes to discover how this session was created and to get more detailed info on the technologies that we just presented. Join me now in the behind the scenes tour to know more about how this show has been produced. I am in the virtual set of the KST Innovation Center here in Kreuzau, Germany. As you can see, I am in a relatively small green set, which is fully automated with Cambot robotic systems. For this show, we have been using two robots, one on a pedestal fixed on the floor, another one on a five meter dolly producing the picture that you have just seen in the outro of the episode. There is a third camera on a tripod providing a continuous wide angle shot of the recording. In all three cases, we are using a large sensor camera like the Varicam LT. The reason for that is to get the best picture quality for the chroma gear that we need in the virtual set. The good thing of the robotic arm is that it is collaborative. It means that nobody can get injured by an accidental move of the robot. 
we don't need to create a safety area around the robot so that we can maximize the space in the studio. Thanks to the robots, we have achieved a high degree of automation in our recording, with no operators in the studio, and with the operator just recalling the movements by pressing a button. As a result, the look on our program is full of dynamic images where the robots are always moving smoothly, producing nice content, and also offering new angles in our virtual background. And to know more about the production of this show, follow me to the control room. So highlights on the Kairos control panel actually are several things. First of all would be that I can have a B-side on a layer bus. So that's what I'm representing here in the upper left segment, which is the B-side of one of my boxes of my picture and pictures. And this is representing the AB bus side on my right box, on the smaller one. So this is one thing which is a unique thing, how to control it on the control panel in this technology, uh, having a full look ahead preview on my layers. Now the coolest part actually when we're looking at the multi-viewer saying in the lower left corner we see that's the main output of that picture and picture scene. And I see a look ahead preview only from that scene sitting in there. So I see already my look ahead side and I'm switching in here and I'm seeing the look ahead side of that segment here as well. So what if uh, the director in now decides, okay, yes, you built the mixed transition, but we want to have another transition type. So Kairos leaves me the ability to have also source options, so to speak, for transition types. And now I can determine, saying on my transition for my left box, which is at this moment a mixed transition type only, I want to make a temporary override, saying this should become a so-called zoom transition instead. And now from here on, I do the zoom effect. However, if the director insists or saying he needs to have another transition except not a mixed transition, um, say I have source options, I can build myself transitions, I can override the existing transition at any time, saying I want to make a wipe circle instead. So I simply press the wipe circle to my delegation and I have the wipe circle within that transition. Or even so saying I want to have a scale effect or I want to have a zoom effect, whatever comes in my mind, make it a plan B, a plan C or a plan D. Macros on this control panel, actually in Kairos, we have um, two segments here, which we call the main macros, global macros, and we have the, the scene macros, so dedicated macros within the scene. But on top of this, with each and every control panel, every profile which is handled within the software has its own set of so-called panel macros. I'm using right now um, just some very um, small macros, which I'm using for my countdown clock uh, within the multi-viewer. So right now we're hanging on 10 seconds, so I want to do a 20 second or a 30 second countdown, whatever, come back to the 10 second countdown, so I want to start the countdown. I can pause the countdown in the meantime, or I can set this back to reset and reset the timer and start from scratch. So um, even though I have a GUI uh, PC sitting on the right hand side, most of my controls which are required for my production actually I have straight on my control panel. So even on my scene, which is called right now this PIP thing, which is mentioned now here in my joystick section. Um, delegating to my PIP, say I want to adjust my left box, the big one. So I'm going to the big box over here and I will see all the controls which are now uh, used within this layer. So I have crops, I have corner pinning and I have transform 2D. So saying I'm going to my transform 2D and now I can resize the image, make this smaller, make it larger, I have an acceleration button within the joystick, make my positioning over here. Um, and do my adjustments without touching the GUI for those minor adjustments. If I would have a PDZ camera as a cross point over here or even a VTR, uh, which I have under control on my desk, I can go straight into the cross point. Then I would see the PDZ coming up here and I would hit the PDZ and I have the PDZ straight under control on the joystick itself. It's probably not that easy to answer this question. What is the coolest part on that control button? Because um, I'm, not, I'm struggling if it's just the ability to split uh, my crossbars or is it the way to temporarily override my transition section or having independent uh, panel macros once we go into a situation having more than one control panel uh, connected to the system um, to be honest I don't know but I think those are all cool features.
Now it's time to know more about the control of the robotics in the Virtual Studio and how the movements were created and executed. For that, we are going to have a talk with Felix Moskow. Actually, uh, for our program, I created a really simple matrix, which we see here. And for the more complex scenes, I used our timeline editor to create moves. So basically, I can take any position from my show, drag it into the timeline and store it as a move. We had a few situations where we wanted to have two cameras moving at the same time. So I simply have put two cameras into one cell of our matrix. So the Kairos operator only had to choose just the right picture. So basically in the software I created you and Gillim as a person and then all positions which are linked to that person in the case that uh, you would have not made it here and would have been replaced uh, with a guy who was a head taller or smaller, then for me actually this would just have been one click and then my entire show would have been adjusted again. I have this T-bar on my control panel and with this T-bar I can actually pull a slow-mo into my ongoing move. So when I move the T-bar all the way down, the move stops and when I pull it up, it slowly increases again until we are back to real time. So actually it's really simple for me to react to the live situation. One of my favorite functions actually is the so-called target mode. In target mode I can tell my robotic camera systems to lock and follow a single target. So basically I can tell my robot, okay, you are now fixed on that target and I as an operator can just make a really nice angle with the camera and I don't have to care about the perspective anymore. Our robots or the CamBot system in general directly provides calibrated 3D data for the graphics stations. But uh, why don't we just go and have a look for the graphics? This is uh, the set we designed for Panasonic. We showed off this set in an LED cube. We showed it off in a green screen like today. So uh, this really shows how versatile this workflow is. For the demo today, we designed the newest Panasonic products in ultra high detail and uh, you can see it's going really to the last connector and whatsoever. So here we see the setup um, window for zero density. So basically this is the whole picture and tracking pipeline of our machine. And the big benefit from using zero density is that I can route any signals in here. So this is very flexible and I can check if anything is wrong or if anything is needed to adjust. I can really throw the virus in here and check every signal. So with that uh, simple operating interface, I was able to handle all the objects we had on set. The ultra large UE150. I have a button to trigger the animations which you have seen. For example, I had those three buttons to switch the location and also I had this section here for the outro we made. In a highly automated studio, you can even automize that, so nobody even has to take care about any graphics while the show is going on. With the new Unreal Engine version 5 appearing next year, the whole workflow of designing stuff will get a lot of simpler. Yeah, we can get by far more detailed objects without having to watch performance. So this will get really interesting for industrial customers, for example, which want to showcase their products in a Virtual Studio environment. Also, we see that Virtual Studio is going away from the simple green screen application into some more versatile solutions like LED caves, projection caves, or maybe even entirely virtual production. So basically, the talent or the moderator can be a mocap suit and then the whole thing is like an animated movie, but photorealistic. And now we have come at the end of the Panasonic live video series. I really appreciate your attention and I hope you have enjoyed all the technologies we have been showing around. Thanks for watching. Please stay well and see you soon.